Well, hey artists, I have a real quick demo I wanna do for you today and it's all about glazing your work. What is glazing? Well, say you get stuck and you've created a painting and the color's just not quite what you want it to be and you wanna create this richness and this depth. Well, you can do that by taking a glazing medium like GAC 100 or Golden's acrylic glazing liquid gloss and sometimes, you know, you can even use a uh, matte medium or water. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The point is, is we're going to mix this in with some paint and we're going to change the overall tone or hue of these paintings. I have really easy kind of just gentle brush strokes here for you to take a look at and for us to transfer. But I've used this method on more complex paintings, like an entire floral that just didn't have the quite the oomph that it, it really needed. So I want to show you what happens when we mix paint with a glazing medium and use that beautiful transparency to alter the look. So I'm just gonna take a little of this GAC 100 here and I'm gonna use two colors to change what this looks like, two separate so that you can see. I have this quinacridone magenta and I have some Hansa yellow light. You do kinda of need to know your color wheel here. So I'm adding that there and just for the heck of it, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gl acrylic glazing medium in this one. It's really irrelevant which one you use and you just mix them up pretty good so it's taking a tra already transparent paint and making it more transparent so that you can just brush it across and it's going to change now watch i'm going to dip a little bit of water so that we're just thinning this out and i'm going to brush across here now if it feels a little too thick it's okay you can use a brush or you can use a rag I'm going to show you what you can do. You just brush it across and then wipe it down and you've changed the entire look without covering up the underpainting. So you can still see all that texture that we painted. So it's just like bringing this richness and we've got all these pink and purple undertones and that changes it completely. Now what if I want to go ahead and do the same thing here. I've got my yellow, Hansa yellow medium. So I'm just going to brush that on lightly. It seems like a lot at first, but your goal is to just get a thin layer on there. Like I said, you can use a little bit of water as well, not gonna harm it. And you're tinting entire surface with paint. I'm gonna take my rag, I'm gonna wipe it down. It depends on how thin your medium is, but see, I've changed this completely to reflect a whole different color value and undertone, but we haven't lost the painting itself because we glazed it. Let's try this again with the orange one and see what happens when we change it as well. Well, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and take the brush. Let's see, where is my pink one? I wanna go ahead and do this one here. A little more glazing medium mixed in to make sure that it's good and thin. We'll see how much we change the look of this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. Bottom half is gonna get the pink, quinacridone magenta. It's a very transparent color to begin with and I'm just going to brush it over and I don't know if you realize that I'm still keeping all the integrity of what's underneath it. if I had darker values it might be able to show a little bit better but see now I've changed the whole tint of it I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing but now instead for this top half just to see how it would go I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of green gold here and more of this GAC so we can mix it at least half and half. Sometimes you need more than that though. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up and see what happens when we change the entire hue of the top half. So that green gold looks pretty good on there. We wouldn't normally need to change the entire monochromatic painting into something different, but look, I've practically transformed this into uh, completely different colors and feels and moods. So I just wanted to give you a quick look at how to do that and then I want to go ahead and take the same concept and play a little bit more and see what happens if we start maybe messing with some unfinished work here. They're just play pieces to tell you the truth and I just wanted to show could these details um, show through. Can I transform the look of the whole thing without getting rid of any of that texture or design or interest? This is something that I love to do. It helps me maybe bring a whole painting together and change the feel of it by just doing a glaze. Look, now I've been able to change that and I didn't even have, sometimes I'll still rub back. You don't always have to rub back, but I didn't have to worry about losing all that texture and detail because it's such a thin glaze. I can go on and maybe do the same thing again, but a different color. What if um, 
we make this a little more of an oomph with our magenta here. I need a little more glazing liquid. And I'm going to see what happens if I change the whole look of this bottom half here. Bring it up into the clouds. So the whole bottom half of this painting, whatever it was that I started with, changes its feel. The yellows become orange, the purples become more purple, the blues definitely start changing into purple. So this is one way in which you can dramatically alter your work based off of using glazes, thin layers of paint. So that's changed that quite a bit. What if I use my brush here and I want, um, I want to add a little bit of, continue to glaze. Add a little yellow down here. We'll see how that changes it. Now that looks more green. So I haven't really obscured anything that was underneath. All I've done is add to the, you know, the, the color and the richness by creating all these layers and depth. That's the reason I love to use uh, uh, this kind of, well, I'm probably mixing there, this kind of method of transparency and layering. I'm going to get a little more water while I do it. I'm going to change the whole sky on this one. And yet you'll still be able to see these marks and bits underneath because of the transparency. So glazing, it's a really fun technique to continue to build layers and without losing all the work you've done, it gives you a chance to create uh, maybe a new dimension to your work. Now watch what happens. It's also going to change this. Now that becomes purple instead of blue. So you can continue to do that. We've got some purple happening here. Now I want to make sure that it's not too much happening. I think underneath might have been a little bit of watercolor, but that's okay because look at how interesting all the marks from underneath are still there in these interesting shapes. So we're creating more depth. Uh, it just creates an interest. I wonder what would change on this because this just turned out so not good looking. I don't know if I can change it much, but if I grab, let's see, what if I grab a little bit of turquoise and do the same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of turquoise on my plate here and a whole lot of medium. And maybe I need to get a fresh brush because I don't have one that I've been using with blue. Here we go. And let's see if we can change that really boring greenish look. I mean, normally I love green, but it just didn't work for this piece. That's why it's been sitting in my files of, oh, well, but I don't want to lose all this texture. I mean, things like these, these words and these collage pieces, especially if you have collage. So let's see how this transforms. I'm not too upset about that. That changes it. And, and I'm still going to rub it back because I want to let all that texture show. I want the color to change, but I want the details to remain. And it's definitely a better looking uh, color combination. Certainly not a finished painting. You need to work on your value and composition and design, but I just wanted to show you what happens if we keep playing with glazes and what it might do to change the dynamics and looks of the work that you're creating. When you get stuck and you're not sure what to do, take the risk. I mean, that one's, that one's kind of, I love what that's happening there. I mean, it's an unexpected kind of muddied purplish pink, but why not? So how do you pick which colors? You have to understand color uh, theory pretty well. And we've been working on that a lot in true colors. So I would hope that you know I'm putting this pink over this green. So what do I get? I get mud. But if I put yellow over the green, I should just get a brighter version of green. And these are all things that you have to consider when you're picking your color. And then the last thing that will be helpful, though you could probably try this with just about any color, the transparency of your paint will make a difference on how much is going to be revealed from underneath from the previous painting. So a green gold, um, Hansa yellow is very transparent. I've got this pyrrole orange. I bet you that one would be stellar and probably make it pretty electric. Be careful because orange and blues and greens are going to just make mud. But that over maybe a pink or a red or a yellow might create something really interesting. But if I was to grab teal, which we all love this color of teal, you can see it's not very transparent. What's great about these different golden paints is they're going to let you know just by that strip of paint on the front of the bottle. There's Prussian blue. It's got some transparency, but it's definitely a dark color and it's not going to show what's beneath it quite as much as, say, 
Oh, my favorite Indian yellow hue. You can definitely see what's underneath it because it is a very transparent paint. So Golden does this, several other paints will do it. If they don't have it on the back of most bottles, it'll say transparent and it'll have a, a scale, transparent to opaque. Opaque meaning you can't see through it, transparent, you can see through it. And really the transparency has to do with the types of pigments that are used. So when you have something natural, like say, ochre, that comes out of the earth, it's gonna be a little more opaque than Indian yellow hue, which is a manufactured color. These are just bits of tips and tricks, ways for you to take what was kind of meh and take it to the next level. And maybe this little tip or trick is gonna make a difference in how you perceive color and how you use it to transform your artwork.